Hello, my name is Martin and welcome back to another video. So, here we are again. I don't know if you remember, if you watched my videos, just before Christmas, November, we looked at five interesting pieces of historical trivia around Manchester and Salford. Well, we're back with five more. We've managed to find five more. Now, I'm going to show you a map now and show you the location of the five so you've got an orientation around Manchester and Salford and where we're going to look at. There you go, there's the locations and we're heading from sort of North Manchester around the western side to Salford and then back into the city centre. There you go, there's the map so you know where we're going. So first off we're going to head to number one which is the town of Radcliffe and the first of our interesting pieces of historic trivia. Okay, I filmed this over a few weeks before Christmas, so I still had the winter plumage on at some points, and then I've shaved it off. So let's not get bogged down with the plumage on my face, I don't want to confuse you. But I decided to have a shave halfway through filming it. Anyway, it is me, honestly. Okay, Radcliffe, sort of North Manchester, just down from Bury, Bury, however you want to say it. We're just by the River Irwell. Where else would we be? Yeah. Let me show you where we are. Okay, so this is what we're looking at. That's the area here. There's the River Irwell there, River Irwell. It's going to be joined by the River Roach in a minute, which joins it down here. That will become relevant in a bit. But anyway, we're here, River Irwell, and this is what we're looking at. I'm just going to swing over to the old maps. There you go. There's the old maps. Let's zoom in for some detail. This is what we're looking at. You'll see we've got two weirs, weir one, weir two, and we've got goits that come off these weirs. Now, what's a goit? A small artificial channel carrying water usually used with respect to channels built to feed mills and factories. So there you go, that's what a goit is. Um, so first off, we're here, Hutchinson's Weir. And you'll see, I'll just zoom in a bit more. There is a feed off the weir, an artificial waterway that comes down here and it runs down this way into the town of Radcliffe and it's called Hutchinson's Goit. Uh, this one here, there's a second goit that comes off behind this weir and it runs this way and you'll see it's called Bealey's goit, right? Now, that's what we're here to look at. We're here to look at the two weirs and some of the remaining, remaining infrastructure that's around this area. Now, where do these two goits go? Well, I'm going to show you. Um, I'm going to show you up here. You'll see that they run down here. Bealey's Goit, Hutchinson's Goit, they run down into uh, Radcliffe and Hutchinson's Goit ends here at this mill and Bealey's Goit, where we, we've lost Bealey's, where's Bealey's gone? Bealey's Goit ends here at this paperworks. I'm just going to swing over to a different map now because we might be able to get a bit more detail um, as we zoom in. So this is, yeah, it's not telling us what this one, oh, Broad Dumas Paperworks, that's this. So that's what Bealey's Goit fed and Hutchinson's Goit fed this place here, this cross mill. Now it says cottons. Now, if you read up, it also says later in the literature that these were uh, bleach works as well that required vast amounts of water. But what I'll do is I'll just highlight a problem I've got here for you because I'm going to flick over to, um, I'm going to flick over in a moment to um, Google Earth. But just look at the two goits here. There's Hutchinson's, it runs down there. Look how close close it runs to Bealey's goit here. So you'll see they're very, very close there. There's an intake there and it runs along there. That's Bealey's there with another weir there, a little weir. All right, but this will become a problem. This seeing how close they run this will become a problem when we try and look at google earth so i'm just going to show you the area now on google earth so here's the area on google earth there's the Irwell. you've got hutchinson's weir there just barely visible bealey's weir there as you can see this is hutchinson's weir it doesn't look as busy as it used to be don't know why hutchinson's goit it's showing you runs that way there like that and it actually runs down here and carries on down here. Bealey's Goit is here. Let's just zoom in a bit more. There's a mistake here on Google Earth. Because if you look at this, 
it's naming that as Hutchinson's goit, but that's actually Bealey's. That's Bealey's goit. So, in fact, I would argue that that's the intake for Bealey's goit there, which I'm going to show you or will show you. And Bealey's goit runs in there. And here are some old sluice gates, which is what I'm going to show you as well. And you'll see the problem we've got as we get the two goits running so close together. It's difficult to define them both. Um, but Bealey's goit runs this way and runs underneath the road here, actually here, as I will show you. Um, but you start to lose them. You see, you can just about make out Hutchinson's on the modern day Google Earth. The, the indentation. And I think it's fantastic that that indentation is still there. It's not been ploughed through or built upon. And when you go down into Radcliffe, um, and I've not been there, but when you look at it on the maps, you go down into Radcliffe, some of these sections are still full of water, which is brilliant. So maybe a different video will follow this. We'll follow this down. But yeah, I just wanted to highlight how you can still see the infrastructure here, but how they became very close together here. Yep, as James says, Hutchinson's Weir on the River Irwell. I think it's been pulled down a bit or knocked down in height. I think it would have been higher than this. I could be wrong. But this is one of two weirs on this stretch of the River Irwell. There's another one down called Bealey's Weir. But they were there for a water source for factories down in Radcliffe so there's your head of water and it took a feed here off there into the goit so amazing that the mechanism has survived and even the wood there look at that so yeah the sluice gate mechanism survived and behind me is Hutchinson's goit so yeah, that was the goit that ran onwards and it went to the left and then it ran all the way into Radcliffe. One of two goits that are here, amazing survivors. Now very, very overgrown, but I'm, I'm led to believe in parts, in sections, there's still water in it all the way down into Radcliffe. And if you come down here, we've got more industrial remains, more sluice gates, come this way. Run James, run. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Those are the massive sluice gates that remain for Bealey's Weir. <laughs> Look at them, those are the massive sluice gates that remain for Bealey's goit. Are you alright behind the camera? <laughs> I'm sorry, I know I run you around, you're like half my age, but you can't keep up, can you? As you say, just stood on the edge of the uh, river. This would have been the intake. Bealey's goit it goes around there and goes towards the sluice gates. Let me just go to the other side of them gates again and I'll show you where the, uh, the, where the goit ran to. <laughs> so I'll get your distance down. So goit came off the river through the gates along here. You see the indentation there where the water course ran. Like I say, there were two Hutchinson's goit, Bealey's goit. Both took different. They sort of took the same path here, but then diversified as they went down into Radcliffe. I think it's wonderful that it's all survived, the sluice gates, the actual inlets and stuff, because there was these things elsewhere, there were goits elsewhere coming off rivers, um, but they didn't all survive. And the fact that you can see the original stonework and everything is amazing and all the ironwork. Um, but the piece de resistance of this entire thing for me is Bealey's Weir. As weirs go, I think this one's huge. We're going to go down here and I'm going to show you Bealey's Weir. Run James, run! <laughs> okay.
think is a weird, that's pretty impressive. It really is a grand thing, isn't it? It really is. Anyway, a little bit of history for you. Um, the a weir at this spot dates back to around 1780. And it was thought that it that it uh, exploited a natural waterfall that was situated here. So a, bit, a lot of the rock and everything is still there for that waterfall. So 1780, a weir was built, exploits the fact that there was a natural waterfall there. Anyway... The weir that you're looking at today dates back to 1811, when the weir was uh, rebuilt, uh, 1811. And also at that time, they built the goit, uh, which took the uh, the water down to uh, the, the works. Now, the maps I've been showing you are from the later 1800s, so they don't fully give it all away. They just say mill. But it was actually the, uh, the Beelies uh, weir and goit were feeding Beelies bleaching and dyeing works, which dates back many 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 years as i say back to the 1780s and 1811 uh, when they, they, did all, they did all this infrastructure so the later maps don't always give the actual detail away good thing at the side of the weir there they've got they've exploited the power and they're actually generating electricity there's like a, a corkscrew thing uh, which was fantastic so i'll go we'll go to the side of that and i'll show you a closer view of it There you go, the River Irwell generating a bit of power and earning its keep. And just back on the goy, you can see here how it used to run underneath the road here. Um, and that's the way it went. You see all overgrown now, but it went underneath the road and carried on and then round into Radcliffe as I've shown you. So from here, Radcliffe, we're going to now move on to the next piece of historical trivia. Let's go. There you go, the goit and the weir, how fantastic are those? Right, last time I got in trouble for calling them historic trivia, but I'm not showing you castles here, I'm not showing you anything grandiose, so I've got to call it trivia because it's only little things, but I know you and me appreciate these small things. Anyway, we're heading now to the second thing, which for a while I've been looking at, I could never work out how to get to it, but let's head on now to the second of our locations. So we're here just down the road from the Weirs at Radcliffe and we've come to look at something I've been wanting to show you for ages. It's cool, isn't it? It is cool. It's the old Blackford Bridge. Uh, I've been trying to work out how to get here for ages and it was actually easy in the end. But it's an old disused bridge, an old disused stone bridge. I'll take you down there. Um, down here I'll take you. And we can have a look at the bridge properly. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't think we were going to find it. No. That's why I've only bought my phone. My, all, all my camera gear's in the car. Uh, but uh, I think that's brilliant. And then, they, they, like I said, this has been something here. This has definitely been something here. But uh, how photogenic is this place? Beautiful, isn't it? Mm. Oh, God. Scary, scary. There's the other side of the bridge, the arts, it's broken. Zoom in there for you. Big crack there. Okay, so what's going on here? Here's an overview of the area. Um, there you've got the River Roach, um, and there's Berry New Road. Okay, 
Uh, I'm going to flick now to the old maps. Let's bring the old maps in. There you go. These maps, by the way, are courtesy of National Libraries of Scotland, so I thank them because they're an absolute wealth of information. There's Blackford Old Bridge, and you can see even on our map, it's dated 1892-1914, that it, the bridge is out. We've not got a complete bridge, but there it is. The works that we're going to look at, or the remains of the works that we see down here, are Blackford Bridge Dye Works that were obviously taking vast amounts of water from behind this weir. So I've shown that weir, I think, in the opening sequence. So we've got a nice big pool of water building up here, and they drew off massive amounts of water to do what they needed to do. These dye works needed loads and loads of water. So there you go, Blackford Old Bridge. Now, what I want to show you, I just want to pull out a little bit, because this was the old route into Bury. Um, and I want to try and explain that, or I've worked out that it's the old route into Bury. <laughs> If you look down here, you'll see, we'll just zoom in, you'll see a crossroads here. Um, let's zoom out a little bit. This road comes from Manchester, going up this way. This is the new road, Berry New Road, and it runs up here. But if you look at what probably happened back in the 1700s and earlier, let's zoom in a bit. Where the road splits, this one goes down to Radcliffe. This one now, as we know, goes up to Bury. But I think this was the old route going up this way. It's now called Lily Hill Street. But it went up this way and it goes up that way. It's now become a footpath. But it takes the route there over the old Blackford Bridge. And then it would have carried on up there and probably joined. Well, not joined, but this is... This is the, the back to the uh, original route. Very new road just circumvents all that. And there's a new bridge here. But there you go. That would have been the old route into Bury, I bet, for probably a millennia. So, yeah, it's just interesting to see the old, the old route. And no doubt, uh, as traffic increased and increased, the old Blackford Bridge could no longer handle uh, the traffic. It wasn't, wasn't very wide anyway. It was probably built for horses and carts. And so eventually they just took a, a different route and built a new bigger bridge here Blackford Bridge and old Blackford Bridge there you go there's an overview of what's going on that's the works let's crack on all that stone missing in there look at that wonder why this one of all bridges fell or if they attempted to demolish it I can't believe we just walked over that arts James <laughs> we just walked over that So up ahead is um, a weir, but there's definitely been a works here, hasn't there? Something, something industrial. Uh, you see the wall there? See the wall with the buttresses on it? You can just see through the undergrowth and then something concrete here. We'll have to look up on the old maps to try and find out what it was. Uh, but that, I think that's what the weir was for up ahead. Are these tanks or something? Yeah, it looks like Yeah, some sort of old tanks there or something. We'll give you a quick look inside there, if we can. Uh, yeah, not a lot going on there, but just all looks like old tanks, doesn't it? Shit, very slippy and muddy here. Just come down by the riverbank, try and get you a decent shot of uh, the bridge, and try to uh, try not to slip and go in here. I'll get up there where James is. We've come up now, you can see the bridge better from this angle there. So what about a date on the bridge? Well, I've got 1755, although that's not from a reliable source. So if you know something different, please let me know. But 1755, we'll have to go with it. It looks a little bit older. Anyway, you want to see the bridge in its younger days and its more complete form? Here's some photos for you. And these photos, I just can't date at all. Right, so from the old Blackford Bridge, moving on to the next piece of historical trivia. Might not be the same day, but nonetheless, moving on. Right, 
how good was that bridge i love i love blackford bridge and i've been being up to it now it's amazing and of course the remains of the old works around there and everything okay so the next one we're heading towards weast now quite a few of you told me about this one and i thought yes definitely i'll do that one so there was more than one person that told me about it so i won't mention the we won't mention names but we're heading now along Eccles New Road in the direction of Eccles, a place called Weast in Salford. Okay, Eccles, well Weast to be precise, just in Salford, west of Manchester. It's a bad day, it's a typical January day. And we've got something for you to look at. Now remember, in the last video that we did, where we found five things, well this is similar again, because what we've got is tram tracks again. But this time we've got a set of points, which is even better. So this boiled building here is the old tram depot, as you can see. And the, and remarkably surviving next to it in a cobbled street at the tram lines. There you go, original Salford tram lines. So that's the depot there you can see there. You'll see the corner of it is, is original. The back end that I was pointing to before is probably a, a rebuild because I think they've gutted, they've gutted the old Weast depot and they've left parts of it standing. Now, just to clarify, the lines you see there that the car's just gone over, they're the modern tram lines. We're only concerned with the ones down that street by the depot. They're the original ones. So I just need to make that distinction. Now, the last set of tram lines we saw, the, the survivors were in Salford, Great Clue Street by the Lanny. Um, but look at that. You can just see the points there and everything. You can see the, the sets or the cobbles just poking through. And look how the end just in the middle of the road. A nice bit of detail there, much more detail on these. Um, I don't know what that is. I presume that's something to do with the points, is it, or something? Um, but there's another one further down the street. We're trying to read what's on there. Uh, I can't quite make out what that is, but it'd be lovely to be able to read that. But some nice original features here. And you can see this is from the other end. They go down, down the street. Uh, and I'll show you some detail from the bottom end down there. If you look at this, where the boys have stood, they clearly went on. They clearly ran onwards there, and then that one's disappeared, and they must have gone onwards. As you can see here, there, down towards the road, and then we've got this one here. And it runs in to the apartment buildings. Okay, so here's our area. This is the M602 motorway leading in and out of Manchester. And this is the area that we're concerned with. Let's flick over to National Libraries of Scotland's old maps. And this map we're going to look at is dated 1949-1970. I had to come a bit more recent with the maps on this one. So let's go into the old maps. And there you go. There we have it. The Corporation Omnibus Depot. Weast Road comes down here, this is Eccles New Road and Weast Road carries on and this is where the tram lines are. Um, let's just zoom in a bit more. Unfortunately I can't find a map that shows them swinging in here and into the depot but yeah this is where they are on this little road here and if you look at the perimeter of the omnibus depot there they just retained this first wall here and gutted the back of it and made, um, made apartments here. But this is also later, it was a bus depot as well. There's our tram lines and they go in here, which is now apartments. And they actually, they actually run on down there a bit. There you go. So thanks to all the people that mentioned those to me. That's absolutely fantastic. See where the old building ends, the old tram depot ends there. It looks like they've gutted it and then built this on. So if you look round here, they've actually gutted the building, haven't they? And just left the front facade on. Okay, so Salford Corporation decided to buy the land for about £4,000 and the tram depot was built between 1928 and 1929. Um, it suffered some bomb damage during the Second World War and 
Uh, the last of the Salford trams ran in 1947. Later, it was a bus depot, the Wiest bus depot. And anyway, in 1986, the bus depot closed and I think it stood derelict for a while and then eventually they came along, the developers came along and gutted the, the, the building and built the apartments sometime after that that you see now. Here's one of the beasts that used to reside in there and clatter up and down the streets of Salford. Sorry about that because it was freezing, the wind was blowing, it was raining, I was freezing my bottom off, if you want, for want of a better word. Anyway, we're here in the city centre and we're going to stay in the city centre now to finish off. Let that tram go past. If you remember a few years ago I looked at something very old, something Roman. Well, I'm going to show you something else Roman, one, probably one of the oldest things we'll ever look at on this channel. So, just the other side of the city centre, we're going towards Castlefield. Welcome to Manchester City Centre on a very cold January wet day. Now a while ago, about two years ago, I did a video about uh, a remaining part of Manchester's Roman fort that's still here. Don't hold your breath if you've not seen that video because it's not a lot, of, lot to look at. It's here in this arch. See that arch? See how they've created a little square? Well I'm going to show you the block of stone that's in there, that's the bit of the uh, the Manchester's Roman fort. Mamuseum, was it? Mamuseum, Mamuseum. <laughs> the breast-shaped hill situated at the confluence of the Medlock and the Irwell, and that's why they built the fort here. So I'm going to show you that, but then I'm going to go round the corner because there's more Roman bits to show you that I never knew about. And you can touch these and you can stroke them and you can look at them, but again, don't hold your breath because as this video suggests it's all little pieces of little bits of trivia so first of all I'm going to show you the block the sandstone block there it is like I say don't hold your breath but that is a piece of the Roman fort now it looks like concrete but if you look closely you can see it's actually sandstone yeah. I think they encased it in concrete to preserve it. If you look yeah. to me, you can see. Yeah, it's been messed about with over the years and stuff, but it, like, it sits here all forlorn underneath the railway arch. But the Victorians knew what it was, so that's why they uh, put the arch above like that, because they knew there was something special there. And if you look over there, there's a little nod to it there on the uh, on the railway line. But we'll leave the car park and come hither with me and I'll show you more bits of Roman remains. So we're around the corner from the Roman remains that I've just shown you and there's the mock-up of the Roman fort. A lot of you from Manchester will know that mock-up. We're gonna go just inside there to show you these Roman remains. Like I say, don't hold your breath. Look down here. You see these footings here? See how that's quite... Looks almost like it's been done recent. Not much wear on it. Follow these along and suddenly you get to... Is it three? That are very, very worn away. And these are actually Roman. So it's the one, two, second footing stone in and then we go to Roman. There you go, look at that. Pieces of original Roman stone. And I think it here, I think it ends there because we're back to the regular shape again. Uh, but you can tell that these ones are much older. Uh, and you see the wear on them and everything. Now I suspect those are from Colliest, but I'm only suspecting, which is up the road, there was a, there was a, a quarry there and they quarried a lot of the, the, uh, the stone, the sand, red sandstone, and they used it also for the cathedral. But, like I say, these ones, you can touch and you can feel them and you can, uh, I'm here in Roman markets now and uh, Caligula. So there you go, I know it's not a lot, but when you know what it is, I, and it's a, a reliable source that's told me that those are actually originally Roman, and when you look at them, they do stand out against the, uh, the, the more modern replica stone. So come along and touch the Roman stone while you're here. There you go. 
only trivial, only small, but I have it on good authority that those little footings are actually Roman. So go along when you're there, touch them, stroke them, bit of Roman history for you. Right, the final thing, and probably my favorite thing, right? So we're heading to another part of Manchester city centre, I'll show you where it is, and we're gonna look at the final interesting piece of trivia. Come with us, because this, I like this one, I really like this one, it's definitely up my street. Well, 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 here we are, Lower Chatham Street in Manchester, not far from Oxford Road. Not far from the Medlock, actually. Now, when was the last time you came to Manchester and you needed to draw water from a well? Well, <laughs> we've got a well here. It looks like a cellar. You know, when you're walking down the street, you see a grate on the floor. Looks like a cellar, but it's actually a well. And it's fascinating. So I'm going to take you now over there, see where the grate is, and we're going to go and look down. I've got no information on it, but anyway, I'll show you down the well first before I waffle on. So there you go, how fantastic is that? With no information, looked on the maps, nothing goes back far enough to say well. Uh, looked on the 1793 map, there's nothing, no detail of it. So I can't tell you much about it. I'm presuming that little wall there was a recess and you could access the well. And they probably put the wall there so it's not as dangerous, I would imagine. But whether it predates the building or it was built along with the building, I really don't know. What I can tell you is that we're not far here from where a place called Little Island that existed for a short time, it was a slum, um, lots of, lots of uh, poverty there. I wonder if they came here and they got the drinking water from that well. Makes you wonder, doesn't it? Because a well, I mean, what we're dating that to? I mean, you know, it's, got to be early 1800s and it when, when we last took water from a well in Manchester early 1800s 1700s possibly even older it's brick lined isn't it but even sort of like uh, 18th century stuff was brick lined wasn't it I know I'm speculating now but that's all I can do well how fascinating is that an actual open well that you can look down in Manchester city centre so I, I think this was probably a recess in the wall if you look, it goes quite high. There is a lintel there. It goes quite high. I wonder if there was a bucket mechanism up there. Um, but if you look here, it looks like it's had a railing round there. Look, in the uh, there. Some sort of railing. When I first came to it, somebody pulled up, a chap pulled up and he said, it's a well that. I said, I know, I'm just looking down it now. And he said, 90 foot deep. Well, as you've seen down there, it's not exactly 90 foot deep. It looks to be like a cap on it. Um, but possibly originally it was 90 foot deep, whether they poured something in it, filled it up, don't know. Right, let's take another look down here, and this time I'm going to zoom. So, as we zoom in, the question is, is this a cap, or is it some kind of just crust sat on the water? I don't know. We're going to call, there's two holes, can you see the two holes either side? We're going to call that hole you see there, number two. And we're going to call the other one number one. Now there's a, a flow of water there. Can you see it? Going to number two. Brick lined. But brick lined stuff can be very, very old. There's hole number one. I'm going to call that hole number one. Now I'm going to give you a closer look at hole number one shortly. That'll just be modern day debris down there. Um, but is that just earth sitting on top? I don't know. And as we come out, I'm going to give you another uh, look at the brickwork. But I'm going to just zoom back in again in a second, right? I'm going to second. I'm going to zoom in again. 
Okay, second zoom, let's take a look again. As we zoom down, I'm going to show you something that I found terrifying when I, when I got home and looked at the footage. I'm just trying to get the camera through these bars at the top. Hole number one, when it comes into view. Go to the right, Martin, go to the right. Look at hole number one, see how the shaft carries on down through the water. And what I might have to do is freeze that for you. But you can see the brickwork carrying on down. Now, the theory about hole number two is that we think they've chipped away. And it's the water's still coming up, but it's feeding to the left there, possibly into a sewer. That might have been done at a later date, just because they knew there was water still coming up this thing. Only a theory. Look at that. I'm going to freeze that for you now, right? Now I'm going to do a digital zoom. And as we go into it, can you see the wall of the shaft goes below that crust or that cap. Can you see it carrying on? Look at that. Well, you could see the water coming up, couldn't you? And trickling off and going down, uh, draining off somewhere. So there's still water coming up that. Now, obviously we can't accurately date this well, but I I'm looking for information on wells and, or wells in the city center. And in Keith Warrender's book, uh, Underground Manchester, there's a little section. I'm gonna read part of this that you're looking at now. I'm not gonna read it all, I'm gonna read part of it. And it might help us, help us put some kind of date on this well. Okay, one of Manchester's earliest sources of drinking water was a spring near the corner of the present King Street and Spring Gardens. It was known as the Fountain around 1650. Uh, when there were other there were other wells around Shudhill, Withergrove, and Castlefield. The quality of the water was called into question in 1711 when a report described it as in general hard and impure and it's impregnated with large quantities of selenite and contains no considerable portion of alum. Um, anyway, it's saying that the water's not very good, and it says, Residents in this fashionable area were forced to sink further wells as supplies diminished in around 1776. Um, so they were forced to sink more wells around 1776. Makes sense, doesn't it? Um, so... This could be anything, because this could be any date, but I just thought I'd read you that to give you an insight into, fact, into the fact that some of the wells got exhausted and around the 1770s, they sank more wells. This isn't necessarily near Spring Gardens in Manchester, but it could be one of those wells. Now, we wanted to look up what was on the other side of the wall. So we turned, we got the GoPro in, and we turned it round to look upwards. Um, not much joy. We can't get enough light up there. There's the grill. Um, but the wall just sits on it, it seems to, doesn't it? And then when you look upwards, we couldn't get it, we couldn't get enough light shining through. So we couldn't make out what was going on. And you've just, you're so limited with what you can do with that, um, that grate there. Anyway, so we had to, <laughs> we gave up. So, we couldn't look up the other side, you know, just on the other side of the wall. Um, yeah, hard to tell what's going on there, isn't it? But we did try. Now, just to add a bit more intrigue to this story, our well is situated at the Red X. And this is an old map, obviously. And where the big green X is, was a notorious place in Manchester called Little Island. It was an absolute place of utter poverty. And you'll see it's just in a loop of the River Medlock. You can just see the Medlock with a dotted line going through the middle and it loops round there. Now it's gone, Little Island's long gone. It was constructed in 1827, just basic, absolute slum housing thrown up by unscrupulous builders and landlords. Just one brick thick, just built these random ramshackle houses and just crammed the people in there and got the rent the, the, the rents off them. Like I say, a place, a notorious place of grinding poverty. And it was right down by the, uh, on the banks of the Medlock. And as you go down New Wakefield Street in Manchester, you can, the, the land goes downwards and you got, you're actually going down towards the, uh, the river bank there. And it would have been prone to flooding. It would have been, it, it was a horrendous, horrendous place to uh, live. If our well dates back to, and it obviously does date back to the early 1800s, probably even before, Little Island constructed in uh, 1827, it was vacated in 1847. 
and it was pulled down in 1877. So with the coming of the railways and Oxford Road Station that was built there, it was <clears throat> completely obliterated, raised to the ground. So it only existed for 20 years. Um, but our well, I don't doubt for one second that the residents of Little Island probably visited the well to try and get their hands on some fresh drinking water. So it will have it will have an absolute place in history, that, that well. Um, the people that visited it, that drew water to drink. My God, it better could tell some tales. Anyway, I just thought that I'd add that in just to, just to give it a, a significance and a place in the history of Manchester. So Dean and Roy, did you like the well? Well, it was interesting, that's for sure. <laughs> well, it certainly was. <laughs> Dean, that's not the, that, is that not the best thing you've ever seen in Manchester? Yes, it is. I've answered for him. <laughs> so there you go, the well. How fantastic was that? And next time you're in Manchester and you're thirsty, lower thy bucket down the well and get yourself a drink. If you enjoy the video, and I don't often say this, please click the subscribe button. It does motivate me to go out and find more interesting things and we've uh, always got something on the go. We've got Cornbrook 3 coming up and we've got more stories from the Manchester Berry Bolton Canal coming up. Anyway, that said, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. I'm out looking for another five things, so if you've got anything interesting, let me know. Take care. Thanks to Roy and Dean who've come with me today and the brew boy who come with us on the early part of the video. Take care. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Bye for now.